Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Spiritual Leader. Um, I am here with my beautiful wife, Laura, and uh, we kind of did our own thing uh, the last couple of weeks, we didn't did. we? We did. Yeah, yeah we I did it. We mixed it up. <laughs> we mixed it up with we their little curveball. It it's good to be back together, yeah. though. I know you missed me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, Laura, I want to jump into a subject today um, that's really kind of near and dear to my heart. It's it's really one of those messages that has forever changed my life. Yeah. Um, and that is spiritual growth, spiritual development. Um, one of the things that a, a message that I heard probably, oh gosh, 23, four years ago was that we are a threefold being. Yeah. Uh, we are a spirit, mm -hmm. we have a soul, and we live in a body. Somebody said, man, I never heard that before. Uh, well, it's it's right there in the Word of God, and God's Word breaks it down and, and tells us and teaches us that we are a spirit being. Now, we should have known it all along, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, because of our associations with the world system and the way we're raised and, you know, just kind of the mindsets that we have, we really never got a hold of the fact that we are a spirit being. Yeah. Um, so when I got that message, probably, like I said, 23, four years ago, it revolutionized my life. Um, a spirit being, that's the part of me that's godlike, right? Yeah. The thing that people, most people get mixed up on is the soul. Yeah. Uh, the soul is really defined as your mind. I always point to my mind, uh, your mind, your will yeah. and your emotions. emotions. Uh, so this, this would be a really awesome thing right out of the gate, man. If we're having challenges with our, uh, our minds or our emotions Man, we know that that's something we can fix. Yeah. That's something we can fix with God's Word. So maybe we'll get into okay. that um, as we progress. But uh, what inspired uh, this for me, Laura, on this podcast was I was thinking about, you know, this is the Spiritual Leader podcast, and I hope you are uh, a leader or wanting to lead or trying to lead, growing as a leader. But the, the emphasis of this podcast is spiritual growth spiritual development. Uh, so it's just so important uh, that we stay focused on that. But I got to thinking the other day, Laura, you and I are acquainted with probably many, many ministers, uh, those that have a call on their life, those that, you know, function in, you know, full-time ministry, five-fold ministry. We work with people at the church and have for many years uh, that, that minister and speak and preach and yeah. teach God's word, etc. cetera. Uh, there is a major interesting point here when it comes to ministry. Now, you may or may not be a pulpit minister, minister, but you very well are and could be anointed to do anything. Uh, you know, you could be anointed to be a musician, a worship leader. You could be anointed to be in business, etc. Yeah. And what the Lord was stirring in me was something that he had put in my heart years ago, and it was this. The anointing which by definition is God's ability coming upon a human being for some purpose. It's God's tangible power or ability that comes upon us for a specific task. You could see this all throughout the entire Bible. It is, it's there. You just can't ignore it, right? Now, for you and I, when we minister, uh, if we get up and you know operate uh, in our office or gift— there's an anointing that comes with that, right? Yeah. There's an anointing. I've seen you get up many, many, many times, and, man, there's something extra that comes upon you to do what God's called you to do, right? Yeah. And the same with me and, you know, probably the same with you that are listening. Uh, but the interesting thing is, Laura, the Lord ministered to me again about this and said, the anointing, God's ability, is God putting himself upon us for a specific purpose, yeah. which means this. This is something that God wants to do through us. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, like, for, I gave the example of me ministering or speaking. God anoints me, put, puts his ability on me. My God, if you're a minister in ministry and you don't have the anointing, you haven't even begun ministry. Because ministry is God anointing someone to minister to someone else or serve someone else. Yeah. We have this lofty idea that ministry is being, you know, that in the light and the center of attention. 
Ministry is serving someone. Yeah. So God will put his ability upon us, right, to serve others. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's one of the most profound this things. It could be a one-on-one thing too. Of you course, know? You, yeah. It's like you, you feel like you're supposed to step out and, and share with a friend, share with a coworker, share with somebody that the Lord has put in your path. Yeah. And then it's like, before you know it, it's not just you you know, saying what you could think, you know, in your own intellect, but it's like the Lord ministering through you to that person. And that's the anointing. That is the anointing. One thing I like, or one thing to recognize about the anointing um, is again, the anointing is God coming upon you or me or you or anyone to do something for him. And it's always for someone else. Yeah. I like to say it this way, the anointing, now I get blessed by the anointing. I learn from the anointing as it's passing through me uh, or upon me, but the anointing is not for the individual that it comes upon mm-hmm. oftentimes, most times, right? How do I say that any better? The anointing comes upon you or me for the purpose of someone else. It's to benefit someone else. Now, here's what the Lord was ministering to me. He said, or just impressed on my heart, we have got to be careful as ministers or spiritual leaders that we don't automatically assume that the anointing upon us means that we are spiritually developed. Uh, for example, if you look in the book of Corinthians, you'll see yeah. <laughs> these guys, Paul writing to them, he said, listen, you guys don't fall behind in any gifts. Yeah, which means this, gifts. they were operating in the gifts of the spirit. Yeah. They probably had tongues and interpretation of tongues, working in miracles, gifts of healing, special faith, and words of wisdom, knowledge, et cetera, those gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12. But it's interesting because when he wrote, I don't know if I have that verse there. Do you have that? 1 Corinthians 3, yeah. He wrote to them, you want to read that? 1 Corinthians 3. Uh, Starting in verse 1, yeah. it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I want, as I would to spiritual people. Spiritual people. I had to talk as though you belonged to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. Mm. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And you still aren't ready, for you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You're jealous of one another. You quarrel with one another. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? Now, the reason I was reading this, or I thought about this, was these Corinthians, yeah. they operated in the, in the, the anointing. <laughs> they operated yeah. in the, man- the manifestations or gifts of the Holy Spirit. They, Paul said they did not fall behind in that area. They were proficient or, you know, operating in the anointing or in the power of the Holy Spirit. But isn't it interesting, mm-hmm. Laura, that Paul told them, when I came to you, I didn't speak to you. I could not speak to you as I would to a spiritual person. Yeah. He said, I had to feed you with milk. Yeah. And we know, uh, maybe, you know, anybody would know, you know, when, when you have a baby or an infant, naturally speaking, what do you feed them? They feed, they can't eat solid food, right? So they have to eat milk, right? Or drink milk. What is that? That is a sign that they're not developed enough to eat food more uh, with more consistency than milk, right? They can't take it. That's a sign of a baby. Well, it's the same with spiritual babies. Now, I could just hear somebody's, you know, listen to this thinking, well, you know, I think we're all on the same playing field. We're all, once we're saved, we're good. Yeah. Well, that yeah. actually goes against so much of the New Testament. Yeah. Because it says that we have got to grow or yeah. develop spiritually. Yeah. Now, I want to reiterate uh, that point. We cannot mm-hmm. confuse the anointing coming upon us yeah. with our own level of spirituality or spiritual development. Now, Laura, this is not our first rodeo, like they say, right? We've been around the block a couple of times, and especially in church life and ministry, we pastored now, what, um, over 10, 11 years. years, Uh, We youth pastored before that full-time, or I was full-time together. We youth pastored for 13 years. We've worked with a lot of people, right? Being employed at churches and ministries, and what we've seen is we've seen people that will be a part of church life that are anointed. 
I mean, they have an anointing. They operate in the gifts of the yeah. spirit. Boy, they can get in. They can get in there and lay hands on people, yeah. minister to people. Or when they sing, when they play an instrument, they're anointed. Of, yeah. We've seen that yeah. dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Right? What a person anointed with the Holy Spirit. But let's remember that anointing is not for that person. Yeah. It's for others, and it does not reveal. If we're, we've got to be careful with this. The anointing does not reveal someone's level of spirituality. Yeah. It, all it says is that God is wanting to minister to others, right? Yeah. And he will use us no matter how, what level of spirituality we're at. Yeah. That's God's heart. He loves people and wants to minister to them. He uses us no matter what level of spirituality uh, we're at. Now, we can grow in our ability to yield to the anointing, et cetera. That is a, a principle of growth. But, Laura, some of those people that we've seen that are anointed, my gosh, You'll see them. They are hopelessly unfaithful uh, in church. You know, they're maybe they're just they struggle with, you know, uh, you know whatever the other areas of growth that are required in in a believer's life. And it goes down to uh, if we compare the anointing with the, uh, the the spiritual development, we have to look at Galatians chapter five. Yeah. And I it's 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 the same. It, it's it parallels with Romans chapter eight, which talks about you know, we've got to grow spiritually. But I love this. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to read that. Do you want me to? You can read okay. it. Okay, Galatians chapter 5 in verse 16. We've got a lot more verses today. This is good. Uh, it says, Paul again says this to the church at uh, the region of Gala the Galatians, basically. He said, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us the desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. Okay, he's just kind of introducing this little subject here. He says, these two forces are constantly fighting each other so that you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are not under, under the obligation of the law to Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are clear. Now, here's what he describes as the, the fruit of the flesh, as we like to call it. He says this, the results of fleshly living are easy to see. He says, sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, I like this one, more practical, quarreling. What does that mean? Fighting with one another. Jealousy, that's an everyday thing that we see and deal with. Uh, outbursts of anger, uh, we've seen that on a daily basis. Yeah, I love this one here. Uh, selfish ambition, what is that? That's a work of our human flesh or a flesh. Uh, someone not walking in the spirit is gonna have more uh, selfish ambition flowing out of their lives. Dissension or separation, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. So this is not a conclusive list here. It's basically things in and of these things that he describes. What does he say, Laura? Those are works of the flesh. Well, what is that? That's someone that is yielded to the flesh, or Paul used this word, and I love this word. He said the word carnal. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe you're a, uh, like Mexican food. You maybe have heard of the term chili con carne. What is that? Chili with meat, right? Or some kind of a carne sauce. What is that? Meat. What Paul uses in the word carnal, it means this, flesh ruled. It means flesh ruled. Now, when we're born again, we are not. Now, we, we have the life of God in us. We're new creatures in Christ. But what we have to do at that point is learn how to walk yeah. in the new spiritual life that we've been given. Everybody, I believe, in Scripture, it teaches us we've got to grow individually yeah. in spiritual and, things. And it doesn't just happen on its own. Nope. You can't say, well, I've been saved for 10 years. I've been saved 20 years, so, you know, you feel like you should be at a certain point spirituality. You may or may not be there if you've not intentionally and on purpose you know, grown yourself spiritually. Because yeah. it, it doesn't just happen. You no. can be a 40-year-old spiritual baby. Yeah. A, I've, I've said that before. Age is no determination. No. A, years saved is no determining factor no. of spirituality. No. Yeah, so. I mean, it's like, the you know, salvation. It's a 
gift of God. It's a free oh, gift. So good. But man, once you're saved, if you're going to walk in the things of God and if you're going to grow in the things of God, if you're going to grow spiritually, there's some, some, some work you've got to put into it. Yeah, you just reminded me of something I preached uh, in the last year or so. It seems like, um, if I remember correctly, you just said it. Salvation costs us nothing, but discipleship costs us everything. Everything. And what is a disciple? A disciple is a student. That's it. The, a disciple is someone that has submitted their will to their teacher. Well, it's like, you know, if you get accepted to medical school... You can't just, well, I was accepted to medical school. I've, you know, I'm a doctor. I can, what? no, if you don't put in the work, if you don't study, if you don't show up to class, if you're not prepared, if you don't take the test, you're not a doctor. Just because you got into medical school, yeah. you know, there's no, you don't have much to show for it at that point. It's pro I love it. And that's a great example, actually. I, he, nobody likes to focus on these, whatever you want to call them, works of the flesh, you know, in King James language. But I've seen, and, and listen, I'm, I'll make myself, I'll put myself right in the same boat as everybody else. These are things that all of us struggle with. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to, why? Because it's a flesh, it's work of the flesh. Yeah. We all have a flesh. Yeah, Just because it, you're saved yeah. doesn't mean you don't have a flesh well, anymore. That's why Paul said, like, I, I, he's got to die daily. You got to crucify, yeah, you gotta crucify that, that flesh. flesh. And let me tell you, if you ever thought about the, that crucify and think about it, what it looks like someone being crucified naturally speaking that's what we're supposed to do to our flesh help yeah. me preach now or don't shout me down because i'm preaching real good right but nobody likes to focus on these things and i'm not i'm not here to focus on just these works of the flesh but again back to the original point laura if we are going to develop as a spiritual leader we've got to develop spiritually why do we want to develop spiritually well for starters for me there's no other way to walk in God's fullness. Number one, meaning this, you and I are not gonna experience all that God has for us until we learn to develop our human spirit. And by develop, I mean learn to walk in the spirit, right? Uh, we're never gonna walk in all that Jesus has died to give us, things like healing and, you know, gosh, the power of God, the love of God. Uh, patience, which we'll mention in just a second, you know, the fruits of the spirit, that those fruits are not developed. Yeah. Which means you said it, you can be saved 40 years yeah. and never, ever grow spiritually. For example, how many times have we seen a Christian that's been in church? They're, they're maybe elderly or older and have been in church their entire lives, probably maybe saved, but you see the way they act towards others. You see the way that they have an inability to receive from God when it comes to basic answers to prayer. Yeah. Now that I'm not saying that to to be critical. I'm just saying it as like, hey, we've got to know, you know, when you walk into a mall or a place, it'll show you the map. You are here. Mm -hmm. We've got to know where we are. Yeah. So that we can figure out how to get to where we're going, yeah, right? To put the work in. But growing spiritually will empower us to receive from God. That's number good. one. Number two, Laura, growing spiritually as individual members of the body of Christ, oh my gosh, I'm telling you, I see what the word says about the body of Christ becoming, it is the answer for the world. It is Jesus's plan was that he would manifest himself through his body, which is you and I and all the members of the body, those that have been born again. But if we remain in a babyhood state as a, as a new creation, as a, as a new Christian, we're never gonna be able to fulfill yeah. I remember, uh, we'll wrap this up with this little story here, but I remember I was preaching here at Melody Church years and years ago. I think I was still a youth pastor, if I'm not mistaken. And man, Laura, there was such a presence of God here in, in one of the services. And I was ministering and I could see what the Lord wanted or could do in that meeting. And I was kind of trying to push it a little bit and see that it would manifest whatever God's purpose was for that day. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said this, the people are not ready. And I thought, I mean, it grieved me, broke my heart. What did he mean by that? They were not to the point where they could embrace and walk in what it was that God wanted to do in that service. What does that mean? And I'm not saying this again to be critical, just to be factual. There was an underdevelopment of spirituality, meaning 
they couldn't embrace at the level of spirituality that, you know, potentially that group years and years ago was, they could not embrace that deeper move of God's spirit on that particular day. Yeah. And it just, again, it, 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 it bears witness again or repetition that in order to walk in the fullness of God, we've got got to, to grow spiritually. So maybe we'll get more into this as we move Sounds forward. Great. So uh, look, listen, I encourage you go back over this podcast. Um, there's so much stuff in here and let the Lord speak to you. I mean, take notes, write down these scriptures, go back over them. This is your opportunity to grow. I yeah. will promise you this, this message that we're talking about of spiritual growth will absolutely revolutionize your life. Because when you get a hold to the fact, the truth that you are a spirit and it's gonna require you growing and walking in your spirit, man, to walk in all that God has for you and I, it'll change your life. And it's the beginning, really, Laura, of the plan of God being revealed in our lives. Spirituality, spiritual growth. So, hey, we'll get into more of this as we move forward. Uh, hope you got something out of that and want you to know that we love you. We're believing God with you. And we believe that God's best is yet to come in your life. We'll see you real soon. God bless.